Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Serge. So I wanted to answer you guys' questions in the comments in more greater detail and uh, I decided that I would do this type of Q&A type thing uh, maybe every couple days or maybe once a week however often you guys think I should do a Q&A just let me know. I figured it'd be a lot more fun to answer your guys' question much much greater detail uh, just by going through the comments here. I have my uh, MacBook Pro here uh, under me and uh, I'm just gonna read some of these comments and just basically answer them. So if I haven't replied to your comment yet, uh, be sure to leave your comments in this video because if I miss them, I always come back to this particular video to double check on them to basically help you guys out. So let's take a look and see who's got the first question here. All right, Derpy Pugs says, dude, it's a charging cord. Like really, does that really matter? It's a charger. And he's commenting on the Alienware 13 R2 video. Well, it matters because you have this amazing computer, right? You have this Alienware. It looks amazing from head to toe. Everything about it is great. And then you have this just ugly power cord. It's like some other company designed it or some other company made it. Or like the power cord was just an afterthought. And I, I hate that. I, I think that the, the branding and the design needs to stay consistent across the board. And if it's not, then to me, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. On my which Mac should I buy, HK Basketball asks, which one is best for editing videos? Well, it really depends on how long your videos are. If your videos aren't gonna be that complex and are gonna be not that long, um, any, any Mac will do. MacBook Air, Mac Mini. If you're just starting to edit, any Mac will do. It doesn't matter which Mac you get. People look too much into which MacBook they should buy or which Mac they should get. If you're going to be editing and editing is going to be your life, then you probably want to get an iMac because it's the best value. But the Mac Pros are cool because uh, they're a little bit better at compiling a very, very long, long video. Like if you're doing an hour long video like me or a 30 minute video or, or 15 minutes, but it's going to have a lot of filters and a lot of text, then you want to get the strongest iMac or Mac Pro. But if you're just starting out, don't spend a lot of money on equipment because you want to you want to develop your craft first you want to get good at what you do so don't don't spend a lot of money on it um for now i would say just get an imac because they're just such a good value they're just unbeated un unparalleled value for what you're getting with the screen the speakers and everything all in one system it's really great if you get a mac pro it's going to cost you a lot of money and you're going to have to get a tower and you're going to have to get all this other stuff uh just just don't do it michael diaz asks can you do a battery test on the 12 inch macbook um, I, I mean, I could, but I'll tell you right now that the 12-inch MacBook has really, really good battery. When I had it, it, it ran great. Even if I was gaming on the 12-inch MacBook, it really didn't decrease the battery life that much. And that's because the 12-inch MacBook, it doesn't really ramp up its processor that much. The first 5, 10 seconds, it ramps up the processor to, to like a high gigahertz amount, and then it drops it down and it stays pretty low, like 600, 800 megahertz. And, um... I guess the reason for that is because that's how it was designed. It's a 4.5 watt processor. It's a really thin profile. Don't worry about battery life on a 12 inch MacBook. It's going to be really, really good. In comparison to the 13 inch MacBook Pro or 15 inch MacBook Pro, it's pretty close to that. In some cases, it'll be better. If all you're doing is just browsing, it's going to be better because these machines are really optimized for browsing. On my MacBook versus PC laptop video, we have a guy asking, why do people get Chromebooks? Chromebooks are just an easy way to access the internet. That's all they are. They're just a simple, easy way to access the internet. Um, think of tablets. So when tablets came out, people wanted a window to the internet. And all those other apps that people get for their tablets, they almost hardly ever use them. The most things that they're doing on their tablet is just Googling around. Chromebooks are like that, but they, they, they go a step further. They're the price of a decent tablet, but they give you a keyboard, they give you a decent scroll pad, a, a touchpad, and they give you productivity apps. They give you a lot of productivity apps. And the emphasis is a window to the internet with productivity apps. So they're great for students and people on a very, very low budget. Sharda Simon, and uh, they're asking about which MacBook, um, they're, they're commenting on the which MacBook video. And they're asking, let's see, I think about, I'm thinking about getting a MacBook Air Let's, I'm considering a video editing on it too. If I do get the air, don't upgrade to eight gigabyte. Could I just get an external hard drive and be okay? Well, you're having two problems here. The first problem is that you're trying to decide between four gigabytes of RAM and eight gigabytes of RAM. And the other problem you're having is storage. 
So like where you save your files. These are two separate problems. You definitely want to go to an 8 gig laptop if you can because 4 gig for most editing is, is nowadays is considered not enough. You can do very, very light editing on 4 gigabytes, but if you have the option, opt for the 8 gigabyte model. And then the storage question you have is, you know, should you just do an external storage? Yeah, that's actually what I do. I have this um, external SSD drive that I use. It's plugged into my computer right now. I do it mostly for games, but you can put your videos on there and other files if you want. I would definitely opt for the 8 gig and then just get yourself an external SSD drive. Uh, I'm, I've been praising these things nonstop. I'll have some links for you in the description. Dylan says, Hackintosh forever on my which Mac should you buy video? Um, and I guess Hackintosh is a good idea if you, if you want to save money, but a lot of times people pick Mac because it's stable. Uh, they like the way it, the, it looks and feels, the computer and all that, you know, the case. They really don't like making a system, which is why they go to Mac. So it's, I mean, if you want to do Hackintosh because you need, you know, the Mac OS environment, I'd say definitely do it. Like I'm actually considering a Hackintosh myself because I'm at a point in time where I'm editing my videos and they're crashing. They, they take almost six to eight hours to compile in Final Cut Pro. And um, I'm at that point where sometimes they crash at the sixth hour and I lose everything, it's, it's terrible. So I had this happen with my last uh, gaming video that I did on, uh, about the MacBook Pro, the 24 games tested. That video crashed on me and uh, I'm considering the Mac Pro because it has the ECC memory and the Xeon processor. So the, the essentially what they do is they, they check for errors before they, they, do, they take the next step somehow. And essentially it just, it basically checks for errors and tries to fix the problem before it happens. And, I'm considering Xeon based workstations because, you know, for me, editing is extremely important and I'm considering either building my own Xeon rig or getting a Mac Pro for cheap. Maybe I can find a used one for like 1500 and even though it's expensive, I think to me it's worth it because now that I'm making videos and it's extremely important to have them be seen by people and compiled in a timely manner. Sometimes I'm delayed by a day or two because I can't compile a video. And even on, on my you know, latest MacBook Pro, I still have this problem. So Xeon workstations are, are probably gonna become a thing for me in the future here. Looks like Daniel is commenting on my latest MacBook Pro gaming video. And he's saying, just build a tower for, for 800 pounds instead of, instead of a laptop. Well, you know, that might make sense, but this is, that video was a tech demo to show you guys what it's like to game on it. You know, it's not it's not a uh, tower versus laptop, you know, video. In fact, you really don't see those too often because if you're doing things on a laptop, you absolutely hate the tower. Uh, and if you're doing things on a tower, you you, you don't want to compromise your performance by going to a laptop. But if you're talking about money here and money spent, I would say just get yourself a gaming console. If gaming is super important for you and you want to save the most amount of money, spend 200 or 300 pounds and get yourself an Xbox One or a PS4. And there you go. Now you've, you're saving in almost, you know, three times the cost. So just do that. But uh, there's definitely a need for laptops, and some people just can't stand towers. So the, on my MacBook Air gaming video, we have we have Alvin Jones asking, "I'm having Gary's mod issues on my MacBook Pro and Air. It kicks me out of the server after a few seconds, or while sending client info." Uh, that could be some kind of issue with a firewall on, on your computer. It could be a new update that came out for Steam that might have messed up the, the firewall settings. It could be that you got VAC banned, which can happen uh, if you're cheating or if you're using hacks or, or weird mods and, and it gets confused. But most likely what it is is it's probably some kind of either video card compatibility issue or hardware issue uh, and the game doesn't like your current hardware. So you could try an older version of Gary's Mod, see if that works. If that works, then you can isolate the problem and you can, you can see that, well, if the older version works and the newer one doesn't, then it's a problem with, this, with the game software and you might not be able to do a whole lot about it. Google your exact issue and Google the, um, the error that you're getting and most likely other people are having it. In the Steam community forums, they'll be talking about it. So just Google around a bit and you can probably find a way to fix it. Okay, we have people asking about gaming compatibility. So uh, this is a question on the MacBook Pro gaming video uh, by Esteban. 
Hi, hey, what about Firewatch? I have a MacBook Pro 13 inch 2015, Intel Core i5, 5200U, Intel Iris Graphics 6100 gigabyte RAM. Can I play it? Um, I would say you can definitely play it. Firewatch is a pretty cool game. I, I looked up the trailer here if you guys want to see it. I'll leave a link there. But basically, he's asking if the game will run. I think it'll probably run. It might not run the greatest, but at 1200 by 800 resolution and probably medium to high graphics, it should be fine. I don't know if it's running on the source engine, but if it is, then it's gonna run just fine. Graphically, it doesn't look that intense. You'll probably run the game just fine. I wouldn't worry about it. So Lorenzo is uh, commenting on the Subnautica 2015 MacBook Pro, will it run gaming test? And uh, he's basically saying, by the way, what do you think is going to be the difference when playing it without using boot camp. I don't have enough space on my SSD for boot camp, so I'll play it on uh, Mac OS. Also playing it in windowed mode drastically improves the performance of the game without sacrificing the graphics. So Lorenzo, I can tell you that if you're gaming in the Windows environment, via, like let's say you go to the boot camp route and you get it set up, gaming is much better on Windows. It's almost twice as good. And that has a lot to do with DirectX. And uh, back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s, when Mac was, uh, basically they, they took a different strategic route. They decided that they didn't want to really advertise to gamers like they used to. Actually, gaming on the Mac was a big thing in the 80s. It really isn't that much anymore. However, it's making a comeback. I would say that uh, if you're a gamer and you're serious about it, there really isn't any other way. You have to, you have to get boot camp on, you have to use boot camp to get Windows uh, properly installed on your on your MacBook or Mac uh, because it's just so much better. It's up to twice as good. So let's say you're getting 30 FPS right now, 25 FPS. Well, dude, you're going to be running at like 50 FPS or 40 FPS or better uh, if you're going to be gaming in the Windows environment. So hands down, any anybody who has a Mac who wants to game, you better do it on Windows because there's just no other way to do it. This person's name is Zarif, and they're commenting on the install Windows on a MacBook Pro video, and they're saying that their install didn't work. Let's see, the, quote, mine didn't have three options, only two, and it didn't ask me where the ISO is. When it's done, it just said error or something. Okay, well, I need to know what the error is before I can help you out, but in most cases, the error is that the ISO, the, the bootcamp probably doesn't like the ISO, so you need to find yourself a different ISO, um, or, there's some kind of glitch or something with your USB drive. Most likely it's the ISO. Try a different ISO. Try a 64-bit ISO if you can. If that doesn't work, try a 32-bit ISO. If those still don't work, maybe try Windows 8 ISOs or try just keep trying different ISOs. Bootcamp is a very picky program. Sometimes it doesn't like the ISOs that you give it. So Aladdin is asking, hey Serge, please, I wonder if you need an antivirus when you install Windows on a Mac, could it be dangerous for a Mac without antivirus? Thanks in advance. Uh, I haven't used an antivirus in close to 10 years because I think it's a huge waste of time and money. The antiviruses are usually just good for telling you that you have a virus and that's about it. Um, just make sure when you're browsing online that you go to websites to trust and that you don't go to places you don't trust because the biggest problem you're gonna run into is, is not paying attention to how you do things on the computer. Don't install things you, you, you don't know. Don't, don't install from places that are, you know, don't download from places that are untrusted environments. Uh, just try to make sure that you're only going to sites that are, that you've been to before or sites that have been tested out by others. So when, I, when I'm about to go to a new website I've never been to before, I actually Google that website and then I add the word scam to it and then I check to see if other people have been to that site. And there's a lot of forms you can go to that say, don't, don't go to this website if it's a bad site. Or, or careful, this site has malware or spyware. And just stay away from it. Usually if you get a good enough virus, antivirus can't even help you anyway. So you're going to spend all this time scanning your computer. You know, you're going to spend maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And it's just going to be a huge waste of time. So just, just don't bother with it. It's a waste of time. I'm going to have to see if I can answer questions a little bit quicker because... This video is super duper long. If I didn't really answer you guys' question and your question is really important and you need it answered, ask that question in this video and I will definitely reply to you. However, in this video, I think I took too long of a time to, to answer most of them. I need to answer more questions in a shorter period of time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. This video is really long. 
Um, all right, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.